Imagine an electric car so affordable, it costs less than many used gasoline vehicles. And it's not from Tesla, BYD or any of the big automakers you know. It's from a Zimbabwean inventor who has been quietly building some of the most unconventional technology the world has ever seen. And now, his $14,000 electric car is finally hitting the market. Maxwell Chikambutso isn't your typical car manufacturer. In fact, he's an inventor whose creations have sparked both excitement and controversy, from self-powering generators to drones and even electric buses. For years, whispers about his self-charging electric vehicle have circulated online, with skeptics demanding proof and supporters calling it a game-changer. Now, after years of testing and development, one of his EV models is actually available for purchase, and it's turning heads not just because of the price, but because of what it claims to do. The car, priced at just $14,000, undercuts the cost of almost every other brand new electric vehicle on the market. While global automakers struggle to bring EV prices below $25,000, Chikambutso's approach focuses on simplicity, local sourcing, and integrating his own unique power systems. It's not just a matter of cheap labor or cost cutting, the design itself is built to avoid the most expensive components of traditional EVs. What's drawing the most attention however, is the claim that this EV doesn't need to be plugged in the way normal electric cars do. Instead, it reportedly uses a built-in energy generation system that recharges the batteries while the car is running. If this is true, it would mean drastically reduced charging infrastructure needs, making it ideal for regions where charging stations are scarce. Imagine never having to queue at a charging station or wait hours for a battery to refill, that's the promise behind this technology. But promises alone aren't enough to change the industry. For years, Critics have questioned whether Maxwell's technology could actually deliver on such bold claims. While videos and demonstrations have been shown to the public, mainstream automotive experts remain cautious, pointing out that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Still, the release of a market-ready product, with a fixed price tag and the option to buy, is a major step forward. If the $14,000 EV works as advertised, the implications are enormous. It could put clean, affordable transportation within reach of millions of people, especially in developing countries where both fuel and charging infrastructure are expensive. Rural drivers, who might otherwise be excluded from the EV revolution, could suddenly have a vehicle that runs without constant access to electricity. The car itself is compact, designed for city and suburban use, with a focus on practicality rather than luxury. Don't expect ultra-fast acceleration or futuristic autopilot. This is an EV for everyday people, built to get the job done reliably and affordably. The low price also means fewer complex electronics that might fail or require expensive repairs. In many ways it's a back-to-basics approach that prioritizes function over flash. Maxwell's decision to price the car so low may also be strategic. In the global EV market, cost is the biggest barrier for adoption, especially in Africa. By starting with a price that rivals the cost of a basic gasoline car, He's positioning his vehicle as a realistic alternative rather than a niche luxury product. And if production can be scaled, it's possible this EV could be exported to other parts of the world where affordable electric cars are still rare. Of course, the road ahead won't be easy. Scaling production requires supply chains, quality control, and consistent performance. All areas where many small automakers struggle. Then there's the challenge of convincing buyers and regulators that the technology is safe, reliable, and truly delivers on its claims. In an industry dominated by billion-dollar corporations, a small inventor's EV could be dismissed as a curiosity, unless it starts gaining real market traction. Yet, the fact remains, the car is here, it's priced at $14,000 and it's ready to drive. Whether it becomes a cult favorite, a mainstream disruptor, or a footnote in automotive history will depend on what happens next. And what happens next could reshape not just the EV industry but the way we think about energy itself. If Maxwell Chikambutso's car starts gaining traction in local markets, it could force larger automakers to rethink their own designs. Imagine the pressure on billion-dollar companies if a small Zimbabwean startup proves it can sell an electric car at almost half the global market price, and possibly with self-charging capabilities. That kind of disruption doesn't go unnoticed. It sparks competition, price drops, and rapid innovation. For African cities struggling with pollution and rising fuel costs, the timing couldn't be better. A fleet of these affordable EVs could replace aging diesel taxis, reducing emissions and improving air quality overnight. Rural transport operators could slash their fuel expenses, keeping more money in local economies. Governments could even adopt the technology for public buses or delivery vehicles, 
creating ripple effects across multiple industries. But here's where things get even more interesting, the potential for exports. If this car can meet international safety and performance standards, there's nothing stopping it from reaching markets in Asia, Latin America, or even budget-conscious buyers in Europe. In those regions where the EV price barrier still locks millions out, a $14,000 option could trigger a buying frenzy. And then there's the technology itself. If the self-charging system really works as advertised, it's not just a car. It's a proof of concept for every battery-powered machine we use. Delivery trucks, boats, even home power systems could run with far less dependence on external charging. Entire communities could be powered with fewer grid upgrades, cutting costs for both consumers and governments. Of course, that level of success would also bring scrutiny. Regulatory agencies would want to examine the technology in detail. Energy companies might see it as a threat. Even rival automakers could try to discredit it. History shows that game-changing inventions often face intense pushback before they're accepted, and Maxwell's EV is no exception. But if he can overcome those hurdles and if the market responds the way early buzz suggests, we could be watching the rise of a global automotive legend. One that didn't come from Silicon Valley, Germany or Japan, but from the streets of Harare. And this is just the beginning, because the real story here isn't just about a car. It's about breaking barriers that the world assumed were unshakable. For decades, the narrative around high-tech innovation has been dominated by a handful of wealthy nations. Africa, in most people's minds, was seen as a consumer of technology, not a creator. But this $14,000 EV flips that idea on its head. It sends a clear message. Innovation can come from anywhere, and sometimes the most groundbreaking solutions are born where the challenges are the toughest. Think about it. Building an EV in an environment where electricity access is inconsistent, manufacturing infrastructure is limited, and investors are skeptical forces you to design differently. You can't rely on endless charging stations like in the US or Europe. You can't assume that parts will arrive on time from overseas suppliers. You have to make it work locally. And that's exactly what makes this car so unique. It's not just an EV for Africa, it's an EV born because of Africa's challenges. This could also inspire a new wave of homegrown inventors. Young engineers across the continent could look at Maxwell's journey and say, if he can build this, why can't I? We could see a surge in small-scale labs, garage startups, and local collaborations tackling problems that global companies have ignored. And let's not forget the psychological shift. When people see a product like this succeed, it changes their belief in what's possible. Suddenly, clean energy doesn't have to be an imported luxury, it can be something created by their own communities. That kind of empowerment can ripple out into politics, economics, and education in ways that go far beyond transportation. But here's the wild card. If this EV really delivers, it could trigger a global tech gold rush into Africa's automotive sector. Investors who once overlooked the continent might scramble to get a piece of the action. Partnerships could form with global companies looking to adapt the design for their own markets. And with that attention comes opportunity and risk. How Africa handles that next chapter could determine whether this technology remains a proud local achievement or gets swallowed up by global giants looking to capitalize on it. And those wheels are heading straight into uncharted territory. Because here's the thing, disruptive ideas don't move in a straight line. They accelerate, they swerve, and sometimes they crash into walls of doubt, politics, or economics. But when they survive those crashes, they come out stronger, faster, and nearly impossible to stop. Already, Whispers are spreading in online EV forums, tech blogs, and industry conferences. Some people are curious, others are skeptical, and a few are downright alarmed. Why? Because if an African-built, $14,000 EV with self-charging capabilities takes off, it doesn't just threaten traditional car makers; it disrupts entire energy ecosystems. Oil companies, charging network providers, and even national grids could find their long-term business models challenged. And then there's the potential domino effect. If Maxwell's concept works, it won't be long before other innovators start pushing similar ideas, not just in Africa but in India, Southeast Asia, South America, and beyond. This isn't just about one man or one car. It could be the spark that ignites a global movement toward ultra-affordable, infrastructure-independent electric transport. Imagine what happens when millions of people who've never owned a car suddenly have access to clean, low-maintenance mobility. Entire economies could shift. Trade routes could expand. Education and healthcare could improve simply because transportation is no longer a barrier. That's the kind of transformation we're talking about here, and it all starts with a single $14,000 electric car. But here's where things get really interesting. In the shadows of this buzz,
there are rumors that Maxwell isn't stopping with just one model. Sources close to his workshop claim prototypes of larger vehicles, possibly vans and buses, are already in development, using the same self-charging principles. If true that could push this innovation from personal mobility into mass transit, logistics, and even agriculture. A tsunami that could reshape the transportation landscape far beyond Africa's borders. Because once mass transit and logistics get involved, the scale of impact multiplies overnight. Picture this. Entire bus fleets running without a single charging station, delivery trucks covering vast rural distances without ever stopping to refuel, and farmers transporting goods to markets without worrying about diesel shortages or skyrocketing fuel prices. That's not just convenience, that's economic liberation. Governments too would take notice. Many African nations spend billions importing fuel every year, draining foreign reserves. If even a fraction of public transport switched to locally built, self-sustaining EVs, those savings could be redirected into healthcare, education, or infrastructure. It's a financial ripple effect with generational consequences. And the geopolitical implications? Massive. Countries that currently rely heavily on oil imports could reduce their dependency, shifting the balance of power in global energy politics. Meanwhile, Africa's image in the eyes of the world would evolve, not just as a resource-rich continent, but as a technology exporter. That's a narrative shift that's been decades in the making. But there's also the question of control. Who gets to own and manufacture this technology? Will it stay in African hands, empowering local industries and workers? Or will foreign corporations swoop in with deep pockets, offering deals that seem attractive at first but strip away long-term benefits? History has shown both paths are possible, and the choice will define whether this becomes a true African success story or just another case of innovation being bought out. Maxwell Chikambutso for now, seems focused on proving his car works at scale. But if the interest and money starts pouring in from around the world, the decisions he makes in the next few years could either cement his legacy or turn it into a cautionary tale. And those wheels aren't slowing down anytime soon. Each test drive, each local sale, each rumor that trickles out of Maxwell's circle adds fuel to the growing fire. Communities that have only ever dreamed of owning reliable, affordable transport are now seeing it parked right in front of them. And in a world where perception often shapes reality, the sight of that EV silently gliding through the streets could be the most powerful advertisement of all. Tech enthusiasts are already dissecting every scrap of information. Battery specs, motor efficiency, the mysterious self-charging mechanism. Some are convinced it's a breakthrough in energy conversion. Others think it's a clever hybrid system disguised as pure electric. The truth? Only Maxwell and his close team know for sure, but the secrecy only makes the story more magnetic. Meanwhile, social media clips of the car in action are spreading like wildfire. A short video of it climbing a steep hill in complete silence. Another showing a 300-kilometer drive without a charging stop. Whether staged or not, they're doing exactly what viral content does best, sparking conversation, curiosity, and a little bit of chaos in the industry. Investors quietly at first are making calls. Some are asking about licensing deals, others about outright acquisition. A few see beyond the car itself and into the core technology, imagining how it could power drones, boats, remote telecom towers, or even entire villages off-grid. That's when you realize, this might not just be an automotive story. It might be the opening chapter of a much larger energy revolution. And yet, for all the noise and speculation in one corner of Harare, it's still just a man and his mission. A man who believes the future doesn't belong to the biggest corporations or the richest nations but to those bold enough to rewrite the rules entirely, because every passing day brings a new twist to the story. One week it's a leaked photo of a prototype van, the next it's whispers about talks with regional transport companies. Then come reports of universities reaching out, eager to study the self-charging system for integration into research projects. The buzz is no longer just about one man's invention, it's about the possibility of an entire ecosystem forming around it. Local mechanics are already speculating how easy it might be to maintain. If the car's components are designed with African roads and conditions in mind, dust, heat, uneven terrain, then repair costs could be minimal. That alone could set it apart from imported EVs that often break down under harsher conditions and require expensive parts from overseas. Communities start imagining what this could mean for them personally. A taxi driver who spends half his income on fuel. A farmer who loses produce because of unreliable transport. A family that's never owned a car because the costs of fuel, maintenance, and insurance are just too high. For them, this EV isn't just a vehicle, it's the key to a different life. 
and yet the tension builds. Every innovation that threatens the status quo meets resistance. Rumors swirl of industry insiders calling the car a gimmick, of lobbyists whispering into the ears of policymakers. There's even speculation that certain interests might try to block its certification or slow down its approval process. But history has shown, the harder you try to stop an idea whose time has come, the faster it spreads. And in Maxwell's case, it seems the idea has already slipped past the point of no return. Somewhere, a deal is being drafted. Somewhere else, a factory blueprint is being drawn up. And while the public still sees this as an exciting headline, those inside the industry know, this is a race now, and in this race the finish line isn't a place, it's a moment. That moment when the first large-scale fleet of Maxwell's EVs rolls out onto African roads, and the world realizes the shift is real. Not a concept. Not a prototype. Not a rumor. But thousands of fully operational, self-sustaining electric vehicles quietly transforming cities and villages alike. By then, it won't just be about the $14,000 price tag anymore. The conversation will move to scalability, adaptation, and integration into everyday life. Businesses will explore how to retrofit their delivery networks. Public transport authorities will crunch numbers on fuel savings. And ordinary drivers will be weighing the choice between buying another gas guzzler, or stepping into a future where they never have to visit a fuel station again. And here's where things get even more fascinating, the cultural impact. Imagine the pride of seeing Made in Africa, stamped on vehicles cruising not just across the continent, but in foreign cities. Imagine schoolchildren learning about Maxwell not from history books, but from seeing his invention every day in their own neighborhoods. Meanwhile, competitors will be scrambling. Some will slash prices to stay relevant. Others will rush to copy features. And a few might even try to out-innovate him, but the first mover advantage is powerful. By the time the industry catches its breath, Maxwell could already be onto his next breakthrough. But whether that breakthrough is another car, a bus, or an entirely new form of clean transport, one thing's certain. The story we're watching unfold is bigger than any one invention. And maybe that's the real headline here. Not just that a $14,000 electric car from Zimbabwe is on the market, but that it represents something far more powerful than horsepower or battery capacity. It's a symbol. A challenge to the old narrative. A reminder that innovation doesn't ask for permission. It just happens wherever the dreamers are bold enough to try. Maxwell Chikambutso's EV isn't just turning wheels. It's turning heads, turning industries, and maybe, just maybe, turning the course of history. And as those silent motors hum down the roads of Africa, one thing becomes crystal clear. The electric revolution isn't coming.